Good to go whenever. Sweet. Okay. Welcome, everybody, to uh, another episode of uh, the SA Voice podcast. I'm Leighton, one of the hosts, and today I'm joined by the Student Association uh, Manager of Business Operations, uh, Chris Moreland. How are you doing there, man? Not too bad, Leighton. How are you doing today? Good. Thanks for joining me. I uh, appreciate your time on this uh, lovely day, uh, making yourself available just to have a chat with me. So, um, Let's get right into it. Um, I know that the uh, entire world of education is kind of flipped upside down right now. Everything's going online and it looks like we will be 100% uh, committed to that for the fall. Um, how are things looking on the operations side from the student uh, association point? Well, obviously it's been, um, you know, a different time, uh, very unprecedented. So, you know, there's kind of a, every week you're kind of looking at different things or trying to consider things that the government changes or things you hear from the college and trying to uh, just work in the same direction while you can. Uh, so really you have to have multiple layers of planning, uh, be, have all plans ready to change at the drop of a hat, really. Um, so we have been continuously talking and doing work and the summer stuff that we can do from home in preparation for the school year. Uh, and at first I planned, you know, like it was going to be a regular school year, updating documents, things like that, because they need to get done anyway. And going forward, re more recently, we've been working on potential contingency plans and how we're going to operate come the school year, whether it be partially on campus, fully off, fully on eventually, and be prepared for each phase uh, as hopefully things continue to improve. So we can be prepared to move forward along with the legislation. So yeah. there's a lot of planning, a lot of changing, a lot of te tweaking, uh, being prepared to listing items we need to purchase, purchasing them, um, getting ready to hit the ground running more or less. That's, yeah, that, I, I echo that. There's uh, unprecedented at times. We don't know what the future holds. Uh, we don't know if there'll be a second wave of this virus come the fall when everybody starts getting back together on campuses, if that happens. Um, so like you said, I definitely applaud your, your work toward having contingency plans because I think you need that in every aspect of every organization right now. Yeah, and like you said, people read about pandemics and past ones and, you know, typically talk about the phases of it. And I know people get paranoid about that and, it, you know, people worry and lose sleep over it. And I think that's natural. Um, but from our point of view, I think we just need to follow what the college decides to do and the government and do our best to help each other, keep each other safe and really work together. Uh, it's a new, going to be a new world going forward, so we might as well embrace it, right? I absolutely agree. I think there's going to be uh, permanent monumental shifts in not only uh, education, but the workplace. I think you're going to see a lot more people wanting to and uh, being able to work from home. I think the office-centric kind of work model, I honestly mm. believe, uh, I think it might be a way of the past. I think you'll see up to as much as like 40% of people start working from home future now so it's, it's, it'll be fun to see yeah like ongoingly different um professions have came out that have worked that way anyway and work from home and i think yeah going forward i know there's been a lot of talk about a potential four-day work week which could work too because then you're gonna have less people in the office at the same time i mean realistically uh surveys you read productivity is done best in a four-day work week too right like people always have that day where they're not quite 100 percent. so i think you can make it work uh and it would give more time for people every it doesn't have to go grocery shopping on the Saturday or Sunday. Therefore, those places could spread their business out over a period of time, which would be less crowds, less germ spread, less cleaning. Like, I think there is a plan, and if the way it can work, again, we just have to uh, fluctuate and be prepared and flexible, really, more than anything. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so focusing more on kind of the operation side of the SA, how, uh, how are some of the students that you employ at the front desk doing? What's uh, been the latest from them? Are they uh, hanging out okay? Yeah, I still keep in contact. My students' contracts, they ended the end of April. Uh, we still keep in touch with them and have a good rapport with men, many of them. I probably talked to, say, five of them this week alone. Uh, keep in touch. I'm always available via phone call, text, uh, email. I always tell them that. Um, so I'm going to have a conversation with one of them later today, actually, just to discuss how things are going. Um, and really, he just wants to revisit the past and, be th and thank us again for the experience we offered and everything he learned in the last year. So, I mean, I love, I love that stuff. That's what we're there for. Ultimately, we're here for the students, be it via email, phone call, in person. I mean, obviously, that's what I'm used to and where my strengths lie the most, I'd say. But we, we get by. We work together. So I'd say they're all doing pretty well. We have a couple of them who are currently doing volunteer work for the SA, and as you know, and helping us with some projects and things, which is great, right? We got a, a fresh point of view, a new team member, 
and they're very productive. So it's, it's a good deal. It works really well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, from my experience working there, the front desk staff were awesome. They all love their jobs. It's a great point of contact day. Eh? And I think a lot of those students took pride in being the first point. When people come up to the essay, they're the first people to answer questions and to speak to guests. So um, they do a great job. And uh, I think he picked a good team last year. We had some rock stars for sure. Yeah, and I think you said the two keywords right there, it's a team. We work together. I'm not their boss. We all work together for the same common goal and to help the other students. And they have a great understanding of that being students themselves. So it's a, the great, the way it works is fantastic. It's just paying it forward, right? And they get to reap a reward, pass it on and continue from there. It's just a cycle. Uh, I know going forward, it will probably change somewhat, but I am thankful for this year's team and the past year's teams. They are rock stars. And uh, yeah. yeah, I always yeah. give them credit. Definitely a few things will change days. going forward uh, this fall with, uh, obviously we may not have walkers, there will not, won't be events to sell tickets to, uh, I think a lot of stuff will be virtual, so it'll be uh, curious to see how some rules change uh, going into the, into the fall semester. Yeah, I think we'll still offer lockers if we can in just a different type of format or more spread out, obviously. Following health and safety standards strictly, we'll do our best anyway, is all we can say at this point in time. When regarding events, again, maybe we can go to do some more things online. Sell tickets, I've seen uh, a lot of my friends who are musicians have been playing some free online sets and it's nice to have something to look forward to when you're at home all day, right? You can turn it on on a big screen and it's like you're there, right? You just kind of have to enjoy the simple things and appreciate the friends you have and all their talents really yeah no absolutely and i i wonder if you can maybe echo my statement here as you know as separated as we are right now with this virus i have almost connected more with some old friends in the past couple months than i would have regularly so it's uh um it's been a blessing in disguise to have this time and, the, and these methods to be able to chat with a lot of people and really catch up so uh, that's how i'm feeling anyway have you had something similar yeah, I'd say you're, you're right. Like people are like checking in on people they haven't talked to for a while. I think it's, I think it has to do with, with time. Even if you're still working a lot from home, you don't have the transition or preparation time. You're still saving time. Um, and you sit back and you, I think you recollect more. You have time to actually think about the past and the people you miss and maybe you haven't touched base and reach out because you're worried about them. You care. You want to touch base with them, right? So yeah. I think when you're really busy and you're in a monotonous same day in, day out thing, you're really like, you know, your creativity is less, let's to put it, as, you know, as best I can. So yeah. I think I have time, been doing more, you know, stuff outside and getting back to like, maybe if you used to draw, you got back into it, so people knit or so, they have more time and they've been working on it. So I think the creative stuff that is going to come out of this, um, and even like the things that kids do, I've seen, like my little guy's got a little soccer training thing we go through as much as we can. And, you know, you really see improvements in areas, even his education, yeah. you know, I have a nine-year-old. He's, um, he talks to his friends online now. So he's learning technology. It was an adjustment to do, you know, the online classes and the workload at home. Um, but it can be done. It's just different. And I honestly haven't, he's been, it's been great. Like I haven't seen, he's been moving forward just great with the schooling. So good for his him. He's with them twice a week. So thank you for that. There you go. I'm happy to hear that. I, uh, I barely have zoom and Facebook figured out. So if he's going to be, uh, He's going to be a wizard in no time. So kudos to him. That's awesome. Well, that's what I said. The biggest thing out of this for children is that they're learning the technology that they're going to have to know in the future, right? He, uh, his typing skills are improving. And I mean, hopefully all of ours are still too, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Well, uh, let's shift gears here. Uh, I'm just going to do a quick wardrobe change and uh, we'll get into the hockey talk, okay? Wardrobe timeout. Yeah. This is a part of the segment why I'm wearing this <laughs> and this and all this. All right, all right. I'm geared up. I got my Tavares jersey on. I got my Leafs hat. Um, things are golden. I'm just going to switch my background and we're good, bud. And ooh, here we go. Ooh, here we go. Hard. It's a fight. It's a hard the eyes, man, you know? There we go. So, playoff hockey looks to be back. We look like the NHL is going to come back. Um, training camps are going to start no later, um, no earlier, excuse me, than July 10th. So we're looking at early August hockey. Tell me how you're feeling. I'm feeling excited. I was pretty optimistic that the season would come back eventually anyway, looking at it more from a business perspective, because ultimately hockey's a game, it's for kids and all that. But number one, by the commissioner and the owners, it's money, it's a business. 
I figured it was going to come back. I had lots of debate with friends. They were like, it won't come back. It won't come back. I'm like, it will. Uh, the potential for revenue is there. And if they could do it within a, to keep people health and healthy still, then it's a, it's a for sure. And I mean, what kind of sports are you watching right now? There's Bundle League, there's German soccer, there's Korean baseball on TV, which I've actually watched because <laughs> a little bit. Um, and you know, now what UFC, if you're not a fan of that stuff, there's nothing else going on. So I think the NHL has a huge chance. Oh, I'm sorry, NASCAR. I don't want to get for the NASCAR. Oh, yes. Either. That restarted. Don't leave even the ones they were doing for a while were cool. But I think uh, NHL has a great opportunity to capture some new audiences that maybe before were distracted by all these other things. And really, they've really been trying to reach the different American markets for years during uh, Gary Bettman, the current commissioner's whole regime. So I think this is a great opportunity for, for the league and for him to reach out to what he's been going for. I mean, I, yeah, I agree. It's a ways away. Yeah. But are you like looking forward to sitting back uh, in an August evening and putting on a hockey game after see, a hard day? See, work, this or? is where I'm conflicted because as hockey fans, we'd love for it to come back. But um, I want to hear your thoughts on the argument that there is an argument for the season to have been scrapped. I think coming back in late August, you're going to have a Stanley Cup champion sometime in September, maybe. Um, it's going to be in empty arenas. There's going to be no fans. There's going to be social distancing on benches and everything. The players are going to be isolated from their families. It's just going to feel weird. I'd love to hear your comments on what you think that does to the total brand of hockey and um, if you think it damages it at all to have a kind of weird championship in September. Well, I think you just have to look at it differently and kind of like what we touched on with education before. Everything's different now. It probably will be different going forward and continue to be different rolling downhill um, or uphill, depending how you want to look at it. But yeah, it'll change and it is a different format. Different cities are going to be hosting all the games. There'll be no fans. But ultimately, it's hockey. Will it be great hockey? We don't know. Give it some time. But we have a choice. I don't have to watch it. I can turn my TV off. I can turn it on. Um, but it's an option of entertainment. I think uh, the world really needs that right now, especially for the diehard hockey or even sports fan in general. People are itching to watch sports. It gives them a choice. Sure, the, the layout, as we've heard so far, is a little bit different um, with, you know, the what's basically 16 teams – you know, it's what, 12 teams at each conference, 24 teams make it total. Correct. You know, there's, there's teams like Montreal, who's just creeping in, who had what, like, they were basically a 500 hockey team at best this year. They're 15 points below the Pittsburgh Penguins, who they're probably going to play in the play-in rounds. I know there's issues, and people are always going to complain. But at the same point, I look at it, would you rather have it this way or not at all? Um, and personally, I'd rather have an option to watch hockey. Yeah, that seems... Format. Absolutely. That seems to be the consensus amongst um, the general hockey fan uh, fan base, from what I can tell. Um, one of my friends said, like my other... team, we don't have anything to lose. We're exactly. sitting at four seed. We're in a playoff spot. We'll have a round robin tournament to figure out the top four seeding. So we could potentially finish number one in the Eastern Conference. Not that we will, but then, and then teams like the Leafs, you know, your Leafs, they got to play what Columbus potentially in the play-in round to get in. Correct. And then they'll beat a team like Philly, Boston, Washington. Yeah. Yeah. So um, Toronto would play Columbus, I think, in a best of five play-in. Um, whoever wins that series would then go on to play Tampa Bay in round two, I believe. I thought it was Boston, but I think it's, it's changing, right? It might. Depending where the end. seating is, now that they've announced that round robin thing, you never know, one to four could switch right around, right? But like I said, the teams in the top four, you know, the new rules are pretty set because they can only, like, Philly's in fourth in the conference right now. They can only go as low as fourth and have the potential to get first in the round robin. So that could change. But, yeah, you guys are scheduled to play Columbus. I know Montreal, Pittsburgh, and a few other series is there. So Yeah, there's some uh, juicy-looking matchups on the on that plate come, coming for us later this summer. Um, yeah, there really is. And just switching back, one of my good friends mentioned the other day that um, if the players didn't want to do this, if they felt it was unsafe, they wouldn't have voted for it. So I think that definitely leverages um, a huge backing to the argument that people want hockey. And uh, I think they're going to find a way to w make it work. And it's, it's a great attitude, I think, to have to kind of move forward and kind of really push yep. forward and have it done. The NBA hasn't announced its return yet. Um, the NFL thinks it's going to play with full stadiums this fall. I do not see that happening. So we'll see uh, We'll see how this kind of NHL kind of experiment goes. Um, do you yeah. think that it will be a success? I think it can be a success. Assuming everybody sticks to the 
proper, you know, social distancing and we don't have the second wave and everything still remains under control as it is in Canada, or if they do the city sites properly and then monitor properly and keep them in their hotels, I think it has potential to work. And like you said, some people are, oh, the players must hate it. I'm like, well, if they hated it, they wouldn't have voted yes. Plus, again, it all goes back to the business part. See, the, base, the salary cap is based on revenue, right? So lower revenue means the cap won't go up. And the cap is basically all these players' salaries. So the higher the cap gets, the more they can get paid. John Tavares, what does he make? $11 million? He does. Maybe next contract caps up, he can make 13. Yeah. I mean, he'll probably be old and washed up by then, but hey. Yeah. No, that's a great point. I think you're seeing more salaries tied to percentage of the salary cap. It looks like, unfortunately, it might stay stagnant going into next year, which is not great for cap strap teams like my beloved Leafs. Um, Tampa Bay, though, they'll get bit too, right? So that's yeah. kind of a team you're competing with. Exactly. Um, but all in all, I'm super pumped to have it back. I can't wait to see some great playoff hockey. Um, it will be weird. I definitely think it will take the first week or two to get used to seeing these players with no players or no fans in the stands. Um, I think it will be different, but I think at the end of the day, hockey fans will still tune in for the love of hockey. You don't watch games to see the reactions of the crowds. You know what I mean? You're, you're there for the, for the players and the goals. I agree hundred percent. You know, you're there, you love the game itself. It changed, it's changed over the years. I mean, when I grew up, there's 21 teams, they're lower scoring games, a lot more physical. I mean, do I miss it? Yes. But now I mean, this is the way hockey is, right? It's not like there's another one league to watch besides lower leagues. Um, but yeah, I think it'd be great. It does, it will be weird to see this, the, the cities they pick as the hubs because I really don't want to see a team having a hub as their home city. Even if you don't, even though there's no fans, they still, they sleep in their own beds, they're with their families more, or they make them stay in the hotels to make it fair too, right? Those are things they need to decide. But there would still be an advantage, in my opinion, playing your own rank, your own dressing room. So I really hope they consider that when they make the decision. Yeah. But, you know, there will be an asterisk besides this year, whoever wins, but you're still the champ, like, regardless what was the last strike year i mean i boycott i didn't watch it at all last strike year but i lived in australia too so the games are on at four in the morning so i wasn't getting up for that but i, think, I mean yeah I who think won 20, that year 2013 chicago? it was chicago and we played i can't remember how many games we played it might have been 50 or 42 games were played that season yeah it was pretty much a half wasn't it like right around there 48 maybe even a little over oh, yeah but I mean, they're still champion. You look at their like when you go, when you go Google it, who comes up as a champion that year? Chicago, they won. Yeah. The only thing I'm worried about is when Philly wins, I won't be able to go to the parade because all this. You know, That's just... right. The border's closed. You can't make it down there. They don't need you there anyway. But there's enough Hooligans. <laughs> <there's enough laughs> but yeah, let's go back to your point about the hub cities. Um, yeah. There's been a lot of talk about um, Canada being the safer. The two countries right now, the United States, unfortunately, is dealing with a much worse epidemic than uh, Canada is. Um, there's political reasons and health reasons for that we won't get into but yeah. uh, I think if I was a player I don't know how comfortable I'd be playing in a large American city right now I would almost want to take um, take the games to Canada um, even if there is a uh, federally mandated 14-day quarantine to come into the country and start playing then I think that might be safer than you sticking 30 NHL teams in Minnesota or wherever you're going to be you know what I mean and that is a big sticking point right now. They're discussing about the 14-day quarantine in Canada. But again, like you said, it's we're a lot safer. We have a lot less cases. It's obviously working. So if we're already, if they're not going to start till August now, anyway, there's time. I know you got to ramp it up a bit, but it can be done if you just, you know, it's it's just a plan, right? Yeah. It's just managing the plan. Two different parts. One part can be working forward, while the other part is. They don't have to fully go together. Um, but yeah, like, why wouldn't you be in a Canadian city? I know they've even said, like, you know, smaller cities like Edmonton would be a, a possibility because, you know, it's, they don't have a lot of, you know, infected, according to, the, like, stats. They have hotels that are, because, you know, the NHL players need their five-star hotels. They have five-star hotels close to the rank. They have multiple ranks. They could support it. It's, again, just getting over the 14-day quarantine thing, but wouldn't you feel safer waiting 14 days? Yeah, I, I would. And, that, and that's my point um, that I think, I think Toronto, Vancouver, um, as you mentioned, Edmonton are looked at as some of the major hub cities right now, whether mm -hmm. they're capable of supporting how many 24 teams for the first uh, month of playoffs. Uh, you think of how many players and staff and coaches are coming with each team. It's at least mm -hmm. 25 players 
plus coaching staff, equipment managers, wow. doctors, trainers, you're looking at 50, 60 people, right? So yeah. um, it will be quite a strain, I think, a bit on the city, but I, I think some of them that I mentioned are definitely able to handle it for sure. Yeah, I think it will be 12 teams will be playing at each hub city. So the thing that makes me pose the question, because there'd be two hub cities, there would be one in the West and the East potentially, but it wouldn't necessarily mean that those elite league leagues play in those cities, which I think is interesting. The thing that question that poses to me with that is, would games just be like all day, every day? Would it be like a quadruple better every day? I mean, it would probably have to be, wouldn't it, to get these games in in a certain amount of time? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, for the play-in round, uh, don't quote me on this, but I think I think games will start as early as like 1 or 3 p.m. and you'll have 4 or 5 a day just to get them through the first couple weeks of that play-in round, eh? Exactly. It'll be interesting. Which will go be like from, the World Cup was. Yeah, we'll go from hockey starved to just an over enunciation of, of five games a day. It will be glorious. It'll be awesome. Here's your, here's your fix. Here's your fix. You want a hockey. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, why not? We are Canada. we got to love it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, Chris, uh, I appreciate your input today. Uh, it was great chatting with you and catching up. I'm always happy to hear your thoughts on sports and hockey. Um, and uh, go Leafs go, and maybe we'll see you in the Eastern Conference Finals, buddy. Anytime, man. Thanks for the time. Get rid of that background now. It's a, <laughs> go Flyers. Awesome. Thanks. We'll catch you later, buddy. Take, Take care. Take care, guys. Have a good day.